Marcy Keckler, Ameriprise is digging deep to explore how different generations relate to money, whether they be Gen Xers or Boomers or Millennials. So first of all, tell me what these different generations have in common. One thing we know is that across generations, people want to feel powerful and in control of their finances. So regardless of age or life stage, people like that feeling of, I'm in control of my money, it's not in control of me. And things that people can do to demonstrate that are you know, really being purposeful about saving for retirement if they're not already there, and taking full advantage of their employer-sponsored retirement plans if they work someplace that has a 401k or something like that. It really helps people across generations feel like they're in, ch in charge and they're in control. All right, now let's talk about the differences say between Gen Xers and Boomers. So what are the differences there? Well, one thing that we learned from research that we did is that Boomers tended to start saving for their retirement in their 30s. And most of them have a pension. And so about 70% of the first wave of baby boom retirees, they can count on a pension for a large portion of their expenses. Gen Xers are in a pretty different situation. Uh, very, very few can count on a pension. And as a result, that message got through. What we know Gen X is kind of the 401k generation. Gen Xers started saving for retirement typically in their 20s, and they're taking advantage of that 401k plan at work. It's kind of a rite of passage if you're a Gen Xer. Here's your first job, and here's your 401k enrollment package. All right, what about those millennials? All we keep hearing from corporate America is that they're targeting the millennials. They want to get into that market. So talk about who's influencing the millennials. We know millennials have learned lessons from prior generations. Millennials were certainly paying attention during the Great Recession, and that caused millennials to be both focused on saving, but also they're more debt avoidant than some prior generations and they really are taking advantage of digital capabilities. They are very comfortable with a fully online relationship with a bank and with investment providers. It's not the only way they'll do business, but they're very, very comfortable with a fully digitized and online experience. All right, now let's throw gender into the mix, if we haven't talked about enough things, because people say that women are better stewards of money than men. Talk about women versus men when it comes to money management. You know, what we know overall, women tend to have a little bit more of a long-term or kind of a planning orientation. Now, painting with the broad brush, of course, that's not true of all women, and it's certainly true of some men, but overall, men tend to be a little less focused on the long-range horizon, a little more kind of near and now. We also see that women tend to be slightly less aggressive in their investment profile, tend to invest just a little bit more conservatively and be less comfortable taking some risks with their investments. And then finally, another interesting thing that you're looking at is success at work versus success managing your money. Talk about the correlation between those two. Well, what we know is that for most people, their ability to earn an income is actually their greatest financial asset. And so success at work does correlate with success overall. However, it takes more than success at work. We know for people to have financially success, one of the key things is to be focused on what are their goals and what's important to them and to really be focused on investing and saving for those goals. And that in fact, some people who might have substantially less earning power can have more financial success through kind of great discipline and great focus. All right, very interesting stuff. Thanks a lot, Marcy Keckler. Thank you, Craig. And thank you for watching The Street.